thank you for this opportunity, the director ceremony. Uh, these are difficult times. Uh, sometimes we think we are strong. So I brought my deputies here. Uh, my brother, my commissioner, managed to go through it. I hope I will, I will, I will do the same. Uh, first, first lady, the children, the mourners, the honorable ministers, Bishop Katenda, I, I should confess that since my appointment as Inspector General, I never had a public statement of this nature. I've been engaging in people, but a different platform. And more particularly, probably I've been commanding. And the many people, they know me through the TV. I recall there was a time when I went to Karasbeck, and there was an old woman who came out and said, a Kandai man. Then we start now trying to find out where she know me. She said, ah, the lockdown men of commerce, the COVID men. So that's basically how people have known me. I will not talk to this inspector general at that level, but I will speak as a former chief of security to the prime minister and unit commander of prime minister unit. I'm very lucky because uh, Johan Jarangul, who was my office at the time, highlighted the background where we come from, how we met. It was exactly on the 27th of October, 2000, when the interview was conducted. And obviously, we have uh, the Timie, the Marit, the Simata, and the Audrey, who came in later to join us, and uh, many, many others. So it's very true, there is a lot that you have learned from the late president. He also taught us the administration, the administration we are running today. Some of us during the time of liberation struggle did not have enough time to go and learn administration. But he taught us. By then we were very lucky, we had people like the Comrade Kapofi, Comrade Joseph Mata, and many others that actually were able to mend us, able to, uh, at, at least to prepare us. And I should indicate that at that time, because here I'm really to give a tribute and also to share the experience that I had with the late president when he was a prime minister. The funny thing and the most difficult time at, at, at around that time was for me to come in. And we sit down and he indicated that the inspector was there. Sinjarangul indicated he has resigned. So and he needed the cadre to take over that responsibility. And through the interview, obviously both of us were appointed. Myself was the immediately. The appointment was done immediately. Now, there were a lot of questions. Because I find the Konya, I find the Ohan, I find the Shikongo, I find the Angula, I find ASEP and many others. Now the question was, how will I go through this? These are the guys that came from VIP. And myself, I came in as a soldier. And I was not even here in, in, the, Namibian, in the Namibian police. I just came in, uh, transferred from the Minister of Defense as a soldier. Now you are a soldier, you are brought here, and around that time, end of 1999, we just completed with our phase uh, the operation Antarctic in the DRC. Now I came from uniform, I came a police officer, and then I, I find myself here. How will I navigate that? And making matters worse, on the 2nd of November, the same year, I was tasked to lead a team, as an adverse team, from Windhoek to Frankfurt, and in fact to Berlin. And we had to carry weapons. I had a problem. How are we going to carry weapons going into, 
in other countries. So the colleagues that have been within the system, they have to take me through. And I provided that leadership until we arrived in Germany. The prime minister then came with the comrade like the Pendukeni Itana and many others. So that trip went as far as went to Austria. Those are all engagements that he had from Austria. We had to travel to Boston. And from Boston, we went to New York. And during, during, time, during New York time, when we were departing after the mission, so the Prime Minister had to depart to go via Paris, uh, Casablanca. Then I and the Brits were to travel back to Namibia uh, with South African Airways to Johannesburg. Just on the airport, we were, we were arrested by the, by the Department of by the Security Service in the USA. The first question we were asked, how did you come into the United States with, uh, with the firearms and you don't, have a, you don't have a letter from the State Department? So we have to explain. We took some hours in the airport, and that was one of the difficult times. We have to explain. We have to go through that, but eventually we were allowed to go. So exposal, as Johanna said, we were exposed. So I, did, I never in my life traveled on my own, but from that very moment, today you can send me to Beijing, I'll go and come back. Because of that exposal, because of that grooming, because of that preparation, so we're prepared. There are a number of, uh, of incidents that happened. I'm not talking about locally, when we are here locally. We go to Swakopmund, there was a, a house, the Prime Minister house, called Hag Hate. So when he really wants to get out of Windhoek, he will tell you in about 30 minutes, get ready, we are going to the coast, or we are going to the farm, or going to Tsumeb. And as it has been indicated here, Hage loved his family, Hage loved his people, Hage loved his family. There was a nun in, in, in Ochoarongo. We, we never pass by without passing it to the mother. And Hage was a man, the, president, the late president was a man who gives, is a man who has humility, is a man who was very humble to everybody. So the other incident that happened around that time as we were learning, and I think that's also something that has also actually enhanced our security capability. It was a time when we traveled to, we traveled to, to Cuba, it was just the beginning of September uh, 2001, and we did almost about 10 days in Cuba. We hosted by President Fidel. We were taken to the Revolution Square. We had uh, we'd been hosted. We were taken to Santiago de Cuba. We went to Pla Hiron. We went to Province of Matanza. We went everywhere, and then we ended up in Varadelo. That's actually where you felt you are away from the military life. That's the, the time I started in forgetting about the Congo War. Because really that was now the exposal which was exposed to us as younger people. Uh, when the 11, when the 11 September happened, uh, it was just a day that, that the Prime Minister, I think it was just a day that they uh, left. And then it was now for me and probably Kanaki, who is now the Consular General, we were supposed to travel. Then while in the Hotel, hotel President in Havana, we saw the, break, the break, breaking news on the, on the TV, American under attack. That was 11, 11, 11 September. So we had to be delayed for quite some times. And they were told to know all the flights were, were, were canceled. So they had to reschedule a plane. We traveled on the 13th. Arriving in Madrid, we were arrested. Where are we coming from? So we had to explain. I spent some time in the, in the airport. They said it's, uh, it's the issue of the visa, um, immigration visa. Then I challenged the authority that, no, we passed it through here. Our delegation, we passed through here, Madrid to Havana. So those are some of the challenges that we had. 
The last incident that I, I experienced during around that time, we traveled when the, the late president was doing his uh, PhD. He was studying through the University of Leeds. We went to, most of the time we are with Angola and many others, so we went to Leeds. When we arrived at the airport in Leeds, we in fact we flew from here in Namibia to, um, to Frankfurt. From Frankfurt we connected KLM to, to, up to Amsterdam. Then from there we took a bridge, no, we took KLM to some way to Dublin. And then arriving there, when we arrived at the airport, we find a lot of police officers, guns all over. Then I was impressed, I said, what, what, what an organization. Only to realize that we were under arrest. <laughs> all of us, including Comrade Jage, the Prime Minister. So when we landed, so the first of all what happened is that there was a group of police officers, they came in and said, uh, where are these people? Then in fact they went to him. But then he said, no, my Jesus security is there. I was called in, we were told to bring our weapons, they were properly sealed. And then we went out, the weapons were all over, pointed on us, but then I become suspicious. What, what type of security is this? So we were told we were taken in the airport, we were taken up to a boardroom somewhere there. They start now interrogating us. They start interrogating us until Comrade Hage got angry. Said, I'm the Prime Minister of Namibia, what are you trying to do? So eventually he picked up a phone and he called Tony Blair. I'm sure at that time Tony Blair was the Prime Minister. It was only after the conversation with Tony Blair that we were allowed to go. And then even, even after that, we were given a pink paper indicating that we were carrying illegal items. So we had to go to the hotel without our firearms. So these are some of the delegates, some of the, of the complications that you find in security, security sector when you are providing security to a person like the late president. But then, obviously, with his intervention, we were able to navigate and go through some of these challenges. Um, personally, knowing the late president when he was a prime minister as a civil security, we knew him very well. You know when to talk to him, when you know you knew what, what to ask him at what time. More particularly, if he comes to the office, we always meet him. If you see him coming with the hands in the pocket, and then the lift start moving the leg, whatever we had, just keep it for that particular day. <laughs> you wait for another time to, to, to engage him. So, but the one thing that also I learned during that time is that he can shout at you at the appropriate time, they are quietly, and sometimes when you are shouted, you even think twice, ah, will, I t will we talk tomorrow? But then probably late in the evening he will call you or you will decide like, I used to decide, let me go to him at the Casa Rosaria. When you go there, I'll find him watching soccer, but when you enter, it's like nothing happened in the office. You start, uh, you thought I'm just going to consult for five minutes, you will end up spending the whole evening just sit, sitting, watching soccer and have a conversation. He will bring topics that are educating you. He will bring the history of the liberal struggle, how they started in 1962 in Botswana and elsewhere, going to the state, coming back to Angola, how he headed the union, that's the union, that's the United Nation Institute for Namibia and Lusaka, we learned a lot from the late president. I'm not talking about the appointment that came recently. I'm talking around that time as Inspector Shikongo at the time. So that actually how we, we came to know the, the late president when he was a prime minister, as I said, a very humble person. We were responsible for his security. But one of the issues that we always looked at, he would tell you, yeah, can you just, just wait? I'm talking to my people. These are the people who put in the office. I've been elected. I know you guys are keeping me, but I've been elected. So indeed, you have to mitigate now between the people that elected him and you to do your security uh, services.
Now he was always asking us a question, why are you guys are so concerned? Then we had to explain the security, technicality, shaking hands with unknown people. We were now trying to explain the danger that can, can come out of uh, shaking hands with somebody. We were trying to expose you so to some of the, of the issues, but then he said, yeah, but what, what can I do? You know, I've been elected by people, and you guys, you have responsible for me. So basically, that is the comrade that we are, that's a, a, a giant that we are, we are mourning today as a nation. And I think it's very, I'm very happy as we are, we, are, we are paying tribute that we are united as a nation. We are united as a nation. As Inspector General, I've been monitoring the activities of other political parties. Some of them actually have suspended their activities. It's a clear demonstration that we are all mourning. And therefore, as I'm concluding, I should indicate that that is where we come from. And that bond of relationship that we built up during that time as inspector has grown and, and, and ending, ended, ended me with me as, as the Lieutenant General of the, of, of, of the police, or Inspector General of Police. I think it is just from that background where we come from. And obviously, with the recommendation of the appropriate structure that recommended our appointment, but that the bond that we established with the late president actually is something that we will always cherish in our memory, and he left a legacy for all of us. So that is the tribute from Lieutenant General Shikongo, inspector, inspector by then. And I just want to say, let us keep on uniting. Let us navigate through this process. Let the life of a legend, Comrade Hage Godfrey, kind of rest in eternal peace. And I thank you.